Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this particular video where we are dealing with a chapter with respect to the microwave transmission line. So considering the two wire or a multi-conductor transmission line we first of all have seen with the analysis helped by the distributed circuit theory equivalent model that involved the lumped elements R, L, G and C. So corresponding to this model we have also derived the microwave transmission line equations and by the next video we have also found the solution for these transmission line equations those were expressed in the terms of voltage and the current form here. We have also solved a simple numerical based on to it and in the previous video we have derived a reflection coefficient. So reflection coefficient is simply the ratio that is giving information how much energy is reflected corresponding to that it was incident here. Now a similar kind of coefficient corresponding to the transmission of energy or power we can say onto the microwave transmission line we have to see in this particular video. Let us begin with. So here we start with our topic that it is transmission coefficient. So up till now it is I hope very very clear that when we have the characteristic impedance denoted by capital Z sub is 0 matched to that of the load impedance simply represented Z sub is L. So in that case we call the transmission line under consideration to be a properly terminated transmission line here. When we don't have the characteristic impedance Z0 equal to or match to that of the load impedance in that situation we call the transmission line under consideration to be improperly terminated. Now for the properly terminated transmission line there it is no reflected component of the wave only traveling wave into the positive z direction we shall be obtaining whereas for improperly terminated transmission line we have both the components present that it is traveling along the positive z direction and the reflected wave along the negative z direction here. Now when we have the reflection coefficient or the reflected component available we have the reflection coefficient which is giving us the information of reflected portion corresponding to the incident portion. So from the knowledge of this particular coefficient we can also derive how much power how much energy is transmitted from the sending end to that of the receiving end. So here we express this information in the form of equation given by 1 minus gamma suffix L squared is equal to Z0 divided by ZL in multiplication to capital T square. Let us say this equation is equation number 1. So in this equation the letter capital T is nothing but the transmission coefficient. So here the transmission coefficient we define. The transmission coefficient capital T is expressed as a ratio that is transmitted voltage or current which is divided by we have the incident voltage or current here. So now we can simply make the symbols to represent the voltage form as capital V suffix TR for transmitted and capital V suffix INC for the incident here. So this is also equal to capital I suffix TR divided by capital I suffix IN see here. 
Now let us draw a figure to explain the transmission coefficient. So in this figure, we start from the source side where we have a generator. So the generator is supplying the energy which is to be transmitted over a transmission line here. So it has the initial impedance Z sub E0 corresponding to the supply V sub X G for the generator here. And from these particular nodes, we have a transmission line. So this is the extent of transmission line. And finally, on to the right hand side, we have the receiving end ended with the load here. So for the load, we have the load impedance represented by capital Z suffix L here. Now, here we have the input or the characteristic impedance here. And now the three components of the power associated with the transmission line we can represent here. So for the length of the transmission line small l here, we have the forward progressing direction corresponding to the P incident P INC, where a portion is reflected into the reverse direction represented as P sub X R E F here and a portion that is delivered to the load by capital P sub X T R here. So the one component, the total one P I N C the incident power, the one component P sub X T R that has been delivered actually to the load and the another component that has been reflected back due to the mismatch of the characteristic impedance Z0 with that of the load impedance ZL. So these are the three components of the power. So this is the characteristic impedance Z0. This is the direction from the sending end for the parameter Z here. Now at the receiving end, that it means the position of the load impedance, we can express the two equations corresponding to the traveling waves here. So these equations are given by we have V positive into E to the power minus gamma L, L being the length of the line. This is added with V negative into E to the power gamma L. So this is equal to capital V suffix TR in multiplication to E to the power minus gamma L. So let us say this is equation number three, the earlier equation that has given the definition form of the transmission coefficient can be treated as equation number two here. Whereas the next equation is expressed as for the current form, here we have V positive divided by characteristic impedance here zero in multiplication to E to the power minus gamma L. Minus here we have V negative divided by Z0 into E to the power gamma L. So this is equal to V sub X TR, the transmitted one divided by the load impedance ZL into E to the power minus gamma L. Let this can be equation number four. Now let us have multiplication to the equation number four by the component of the impedance that it is load impedance ZL and substitution of the result into the equation number three will give us the reflection coefficient gamma suffix L. So this is equal to V negative E to the power gamma L divided by V positive E to the power minus gamma L. So in the terms of the load and the characteristic impedances we have ZL minus Z0 divided by ZL plus Z0 here. So this can be regarded as a new equation, equation number 5. Now in turn, by the substitution to the another equation, we also obtain the transmission coefficient capital T, which is the ratio of V suffix TR divided by V positive here. So this is equal to twice of load impedance ZL divided by ZL plus Z 
zero here. So this can be regarded as the new equation, equation number six here. Now we shall be focusing our attention with respect to the power associated here. The power that has been carried by the two waves, the voltage and the, the current wave, we can say, so that time we have the capital P suffix I and R is equal to capital P suffix I and C minus capital P suffix, here we have R E F. So the difference of that is incident and that of the reflected here can be expressed as V positive e to the power minus alpha L squared divided by twice Z0 minus V negative e to the power alpha L squared divided by twice Z0 here. So this is the equation number 7 associated with respect to the power carried by the traveling waves here. Now when we talk about the transmitted wave that have carried the actual power, so it is expressed as capital P suffix TR is equal to V suffix TR into e to the power minus alpha L divided by twice ZL, where this voltage term, the numerator is squared. So this is the equation number 8 here. Now here we can make a substitution. So here we can substitute P suffix INR is equal to P suffix TR. And we can make the use of equations phi u and equation number 6 here. So that time we can obtain capital T square is equal to ZL divided by Z0 in multiplication to 1 minus gamma suffix L that has been squared here. So this is the very important relationship that we have talked while defining the transmission coefficient from the knowledge of reflection coefficient. So there it was expressed to be 1 minus reflection coefficient gamma suffix L squared is equal to Z0 divided by Z L into capital T square. So capital T is nothing but the transmission coefficient. Our topic is titled by its name here. So here we have completed addressing both the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient in this video. So by the next lecture, we shall be having a simple problem based on to the formulation of reflection coefficient and that of the transmission coefficient. So let us practice it by the next video. For more information, for more information of the concepts and the practice of the problems as such, you can subscribe to Ikeda channel. Thank you.